Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is the last day of the month of February, and I know God has been doing a lot this month. Now, sometimes people want to see things happen physically, dwell on the happening inside you. If the happening inside you is certain, then that outside will fully manifest. It's just a matter of time. Praise God. Hey, can we call for that daily bread? Now, today, listen, everything that is supposed to be yours for this month, release your faith to receive today. It is possible. Say with me, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me. Every portion that is mine, I receive it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Also tonight, by 12 midnight, we are starting our prayer and fasting meeting throughout that's going to last throughout the first of march and we're going to be meeting via zoom the zoom id and passcode is on your screen you can join us or send us a message and we'll send you the link with which you can join the meeting we pray at every watch from 12 midnight we're going to pray each watch we pray for one hour so we're going to pray 12 midnight to 1 a.m then 3 a.m to 4 a.m 6 to 7 9 to 10 a.m 12 noon to 1 12 p.m to 3 p.m to 4 p.m 6 p.m and then the last meeting is for 9 p.m praise god plan for these things find time today rest because we're going to have a great time with the holy spirit praise god now we're rounding we're rounding up i hope so except the lord tells us to continue but we've been talking about the glory of jesus and our text has been from john chapter 17 and verse 22 Jesus speaking and says, And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. That glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is not a small thing. This is something to spend your time and meditate on deeply. The glory has been given to you. What that means is this. The oneness that Jesus spoke about is already at work. It's not something we are hoping to become. We already are one with God. What is left is for your agreement to that oneness. The Father has given us the very essence, truly, the thing that makes him exist, he has given it to us. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you right now, except you're not born again. If you're not born again, then you are not the one we are talking to. But hey, you have an opportunity to give your heart to Christ and receive this sweet Holy Spirit. It doesn't take anything. It's not a long process. It's just from a pure heart, Lord Jesus, I'm ready to receive you. See that receiving you, that's exactly what it is. So you can ask him wherever you are, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want to receive you. And what's happening, what's going to happen to you? The Spirit of God will be given to you. Jesus is the one that does this baptism himself. John spoke about it. He that is coming after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Jesus himself said to the disciples, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. 
So that's what he's after in your life. He wants to give you the Holy Spirit. He wants to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Why? So you become one with him. See that oneness? He considers you so special that he wants to make you one with him. It's not just a preaching thing. It's the, it's the truth. This is the reality. He desires that you be one with him in character, in functionality. So he didn't just say struggle to become one with me. No, he gave you the Holy Spirit, the very thing that made him to be one with the Father is what he has given to us that will maybe one with him and the father think about it this should tell you the kind of life you live this should tell you the kind of things you should begin to release your faith for this should see people don't function in this oneness not because there is any kind of restriction on god's part it's because they have not believed i'll show you a scripture in first john chapter 2 First John chapter 2. Now watch this now. Now I know you may know the scriptures. But when we emphasize on things like this, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Now watch this verse 27, 1 John chapter 2. But the anointing which you have received of him abided in you. Now, what's that anointing? This is Christ. But the anointing which you have received of him abided in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as he had taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, this sums up the reason why people are not functioning in this oneness and what does that mean they are not functioning in the glory why they do not trust that anointing that is in them what is the anointing christ is that anointing the holy ghost is that anointing now they don't trust a lot of god's children don't trust they don't they go to church they do all the things, physical things that they are supposed to do. They follow men. They serve men, which is good, which is wonderful. Because there is no way you'll be walking with Jesus. You won't find yourself serving men. But your service to men is not for men. Your service to men is in response to your service to God. So if you're serving men for the sake of serving men, and you don't see God in the picture clearly, then your service will be in vain. Yeah. Because there is no man that can give you what you really need. Men can only give you according to their ability. But only God can give you that thing that he created fitting for you. So if your service to man, if your service to man is not in response to your service to God, you lose. So you, as, you are created to live by the anointing. You are created. You, that's where, why, how God created you. You are made to live by the anointing. If you're not living by the anointing, then you're not living accurately. And now John talking to us here, he says, you ought to live by what the anointing is teaching you. You see? Now, how does he teach you? He discusses with you. He talks to you. He opens your eyes. He opens your understanding. In John chapter 15 verse 3, he says, Ye are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. The Amplified Version is the teachings that I discuss with you. So those moments when you're just lying down, the Spirit of God starts whispering something to you. Where, where, when understanding begins to come to you. It might be early hours of the morning, it can be when you're driving, it can be whenever. But you just know that words are coming to you. You see what's going on? The anointing is teaching you. Now what do you do? Take to heart 
every teaching that comes from the anointing take it to heart put it in your heart seal it up believe it and walk in it a lot of people don't believe a lot of people don't even spend time to receive from the anointing a lot of people are so distracted and when i say a lot of people god's children now because they're the ones that carry the anointing so what use is it carrying the anointing and not letting the anointing to teach you or not abiding by the things the anointing teaches you. John said it here, as he has taught you, so you should abide. Not us, stay. How many times you have received teachings from the anointing and men have taught you something completely different from what the anointing is, has taught you. And then you decide to choose men as against the anointing. You, your choice was wrong. Your choice was wrong. Every day of your life, the anointing is ready to teach you. Taking you back to Hebrews and Proverbs chapter 8, it says, I'm there. At every crossroad, I'm there. What is a crossroad? Decision-making time. It says, I'm there. I'm there when you walk by the highway. I'm there. There is no time of your life the anointing will not teach you what to do. None. Oh God, I, I nearly need you in my life. But he's there. He's instructing you on what to do. You know what to do in your heart. You know the truth in your heart. So stop thinking of someone who will give you moral support. You don't necessarily need their moral support. Because even the moral support is according to their knowledge and how far they can go with you. But the anointing was there when you were created. The anointing was there when you were born. The anointing has been, has watched your life. The anointing knows your future. So when the anointing begins to counsel you, when the anointing begin to, begins to teach you, he's not teaching you according to what is there today. He's teaching you according to the destiny of your life that God created for you. Isn't that worth following? But can you trust the anointing? Can you be bold about what the anointing has taught you or what the anointing is teaching you? Can you be bold about it? Yes, men may not understand you. See, the truth is when you walk, when you walk by the anointing, only few will be able to comprehend what you're doing. Only few will be able to understand you. And that few are few that have the anointing also. So they must, they've experienced the work of the anointing in their life. So when they see it being replicated in another person, they understand it perfectly. They know the modus operandi or, or, or they, they know how the anointing operates. And so when they see the anointing at work, they say, oh, I think I recognize this. Brothers and sisters, if the anointing tells you you are healed, for example, you are healed. There is no other message you need to hear on healing. There is no other word. There is no other prayer you need. Even as the anointing teaches you, so you shall, you shall abide in him. If the anointing tells you you are a success, the anointing will never tell you you are a failure. Why? Because it doesn't create failures. Oh, what if my life is like it's a failure? Because you're not trusting the anointing. Listen to what the anointing is saying. Trust in what he is saying. Believe him and begin to walk in the truth. Because he will never guide you through a lie. He always guides you in truth. That's what Jesus said. He will guide you into all truth. Not some truth, all truth. So everything you desire, Everything you need to know, brothers and sisters, name it. The anointing can teach you. So you don't need any extra to do. We fellowship with people for the sake of their testimony and our testimony. Because when we fellowship together, we rub minds, we rub testimonies together. And what happens? Iron is sharpening iron and that's what's going on. But you see this anointing? Let me tell you the truth. If you've not been deliberately functioning by the anointing, it's time to begin to do so. Make up your mind as you're entering the month of March. Lord, I will function 
by the anointing. Most people only think of the anointing when people when they see people falling under the power, when they see people shaking, when they see people screaming and shouting. Brothers and sisters, no. No, the anointing teaches. If you shake and fall and you don't receive any teaching from the anointing, that was not the anointing. When you fall, something happens to you. It's not just a fall. Believe in the anointing that is at work in you. That's what I'm telling you as the month ends today. Can you just believe in the anointing that has been sent to work inside of you? Can you just believe him? There are times your mind is set on a way to do something. That anointing tells you, don't go that way. Don't, you see, waiting to try to see what will happen may become a danger to you. Believe it as long as you are convinced that there are different ways you get convinced that this is the anointing I'm speaking to you. By reason of use, by how well you function, how often you function the anointing, you become aware of how the anointing operates in your own life. But this is one thing he does to every one of us. He teaches. And whatever he teaches you is right. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I pray for you right now? Lord, I ask everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Let them come under the anointing of your spirit right now. And Lord, that teaching that the anointing gives from the inside, let them begin to function in it. Creating them a new mind that they will learn to trust in the anointing, live by the anointing and bring forth the glory in such great manifestation that the world has never seen before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are doing this even right now. Even right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see someone being healed on the right leg. Your right foot, rather, actually. Your right foot. It's been hurting. I speak healing to that right foot right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're sick in your body right now, the anointing is welling up from the inside of you and the anointing will bring you healing. Receive that healing now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my green headaches leave you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, someone has been healed in the knee. Your knee hurts but you are being healed right now. I, I see someone having some strong pain on the left side of your body. A pain that goes from the front to the back. It just goes. There are times you feel it. I rebuke that pain right now. Command it to leave your body now. In Jesus' name, be free. In the name of the Lord jesus christ thank you lord jesus the lord is healing he's changing lives today oh glory 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 we give you praise thank you lord jesus i pray as this month ends today let a miracle happen in your life to show the love of god in your life in the name of the lord jesus christ amen god bless you my time is up i'll be looking forward to seeing you tonight via zoom